Amen. We're going to be blessed this morning. We've got a young boy on the block who uh, loves Jesus, he loves talking about Jesus. And so, guess let's welcome Lee this morning. Amen. <laughs> I'll just I'll talk some rubbish for a second while uh, Dave gets my levels right. I too have a book, Dan. <laughs> the biggest form of flattery, I believe, is somebody imitating one another. That's why Jesus says to be around those who love him and who can big you up and pick you up when you're down. So let's have a look, shall we? Lots of notes as well. Unusual for me. I'm a bullet point kind of guy. Okay. <sighs> what an honour and a privilege it is to stand before you. To be able to share with you the journey that God's been taking me on through this prophecy that he gave to Sam. What an absolute honour and a privilege it is. So before I begin... I've got my trusty friend on the computer. So Christopher, if you could put up the first slide, please. Pow! You see, over the last few weeks, if you haven't been in, Dan's been talking, and he gave us this. Pow! So we pray, we're obedient, and we worship. For me, straight away, it was like, wow, I love the graphic, because it caught my imagination. And I'm a kind of like graphic kind of guy, you know, um, I'm very like hip, like that. Um, never mind that, I'm hip, I'm very, I'm very cool. And my daughter's even more... If you believe it, that's all right. <laughs> you know what I prayed for you earlier when you cried out in pain? You, and I'm glad you did. <laughs> Can't get the staff, you know. <laughs> anyway, my daughter has overtaken me in the technological aspects of life. Oh, Isn't that crazy? You know, she is just, she's going, yeah, and she yeah. is just out there. Lovely. And it just blows my mind. But pow! Pow pow! <laughs> I will walk around a lot, so if you feel sick, I may stick to my notes Bless at some you. point. Bless but pow! So we need to pray, we need to be obedient, yeah. and we need to be in worship. And then Dan went on and said that we are being prepared. And I went, for what? <laughs> what are we being prepared for? Yes. And he said that we are a work in progress, yeah. that we are on the potter's wheel and we are within oh, the man. potter's hand. Oh, oh. I learned something this week, that when I lean in, Joe, Dan's wife, she comes up with some good stuff every now and then, apart from cakes. But she said sometimes that still small voice, this was in the life meeting on Wednesday, when you speak very quietly, people lean in and Jesus comes very still, sweet voice. And I learned that it isn't from over my shoulder, but it's in front of me. And when he speaks that way, I lean in. Yeah. And I keep leaning. Yeah. And I keep leaning. And do you know where I end up, Terry? Tell me. Go on. I'm laid upon his chest. Amen. Just Lovely like John. Place. Lovely place, brother. Wow. What a picture as he Lovely. speaks so softly to us. That we just lean in. Yeah. And oh, Lovely. we are safe within the hand of yeah. the potter. Yes. Amen. He is forming what was cracked and not good into something great. So thank you, thank Dan. You, Lord. Lovely. Lovely. See, it is important to remember where we've come from. Yeah. Yes, it is. And it is important to remember what he has done. Yeah. Yeah. And it is important to understand that he's going to continue doing. Yeah. I don't know the outcome for you and I don't know the outcome for me, but I know it's got to be good. Yeah. Because he continually works on us. So let's have a look at brother Samuel. So Samuel gave us his prophecy. And I was, I was reading it and reading it and reading it. And, I, and to be honest, I was excited about parts. 
but I wasn't really getting overly excited. And I was like, God, why is this? Why is this? And it occurred to me. You see, God doesn't wake me in the morning. We heard on the life meeting from Wednesday, it's good to be woken in the morning. But God knows my frame, Richie. Yeah. And he knows I hate getting up early. <laughs> and he knows I'm a night bird. So you see, God wakes me with a song. He wakes me with a song, which is a word. And he gives me a song in my heart in the morning. But he leads me into bedtime. And that's when he speaks to me. You see, don't tell Cal, but I do actually snore. <laughs> so I deliberately try to stay up as long as I can so that she's fallen asleep. And in those quiet moments when I'm laid in my bed and there's darkness all around and I'm just focusing on being quiet, he speaks to me. And this is what I had. Now, Samuel was woken early in the morning with a word, restoration. And it stopped right there for me. Because, you know, ever since I got to know the one who is all things, I've been on a walk of restoration. You see, I used to love these, like, programs. And these programs, and they find old, old cars in America, and they've got, like, trees growing out of them. Yeah. And you go, oh my goodness, this car's like 200 years old. It's got square wheels. Yeah. Um, and these guys, they take this and they call it rusty gold. Yeah. Right? And they take this, what has just been left, and it's falling apart. And there's nothing to it. And 99.9% .9 of people walk past that and go, God, what a mess he's got in his garden. Yeah. Yeah. And that 0.1% sees there's value. Yeah. yeah. And they take it and they chop down the tree within the car and they rip it out and they yeah. gut it. Yeah, and they don't ever, in this program, they don't ever make it shiny brand new. They say you need to see the rusty gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to see the imperfections to know its story. And this is what restoration is for me. That it's knowing the story. We are allowed to share our story. Yeah. And we are allowed to... Be honest and say, it ain't over yet. I'm not the finished product. I'm never going to get everything right, Andy. And yeah, it is getting cold, so I'll put jeans on today. <laughs> but this is where he had me, in restoration. And I praise God for that. He woke me early. And he gave Sam the word of restoration. You see, when I think about restoration, I think about a recovery. You see... So we see a car trapped under a tree and they recovered it and they restored it so it could be used again. So I think about recovery. And this is where I see myself. I see myself on a dirt track and I'm walking and, I'm, and I can see where I want to be, but I've just got to get there. Can anybody relate to that? Yeah. Wendy touched on it this morning. Yeah, we just got to keep going. And in faith, like Rob said, we have to add patience. Yeah. Because I can't just go from here to there. Because I'm not equipped to deal with there until I get there. Until we get there, we're not equipped. And God is equipping us. Yeah. You see, he's taken us on a journey from A to B to C to D, all the way to Z. And this is a place I call the recovery road. It's not always a great place to be. Sometimes you're walking downhill and it feels easy. And sometimes you're going uphill and your legs are burning and you don't know if you can take another step. And sometimes there's potholes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes it's newly laid ground. Sometimes it's raining. It's windy. Sometimes it's sunny. Sometimes it's mild and just right. Yeah. You see, the sun for Dan would be a perfect place to be because he would walk on this road and he would follow where the sun was setting to get the last piece of sun. <laughs> you know, if you ever drive past Dan's house and it's a sunny evening, 
He sat on his doorstep at the front of his door with his shirt off and his shorts rolled up because that's the last bit of sun he gets at his house. Am I right or am I lying, brother? Oh, I'm right. I am right, Rosie, aren't I? Yeah. You see, so, so today, I said, God, what is it you want me to talk about with this recovery road? We're on the road. But how do I overcome? I know I can come to you. But what have you given me? Now, I like DIY, not like Dan, who doesn't like DIY. So I've got a trusty DIY bag, see? I carry a bag with DIY because my toolkit is too heavy because I've got too much in it. Okay? So when I've got to go and do a job, and Dan probably would attest to this, so I've been around his house a few times, you, you give Roger all the props and you never talk about me. <laughs> so we always grab my trusty little tool bag and I stick in the bag what I need for that job. Lead as a tile come off my roof. <laughs> all right, I'm not bringing a ladder. Get your own ladder. But I'll, I'll bring what I need. So he gives us tools. Okay, so we've got some tools. I've got some tools here. It's quite a heavy bag, to be honest. So that's why I only bring what I need. You see, while we're on this rough recovery road, and we've got the tools we need. You see, I may use a tool, and I may come across a branch, and that branch is in my way, you know? Don't worry, it's got a sheaf on it. So I've got a saw. It's not the right saw for the sheaf, but Kelly told me off because I had a, a saw with an exposed edge, Rob, because that cuts. And I've used my saw. I thought, oh, don't need that no more. I'll carry on, it's good. Okay, oh no. Then there's something else, you see, and then I use my trusty drill, right? And I carry on my path and I'm still walking because I've come up against trials there, Jill, and I've overcome them with the tools he's given me, okay? But they were in my bag. And then I had to do some, well, would I use this here for doing screws or would I cut a tree down with that one? Exactly right. So I've had to put a new doorknob on. And do you know what? I had to hit it because it just wouldn't go right. But I carried on. My bag's getting lighter, see? And then do you know what? There was rain and I put a tarp over me but I had a hole in it. So I used my gaffer tape. Right? So I sealed it. So I was dry for the night. But I carried on walking. The tarp was no good, so I used my staple gun, Rob. But I forgot to fill it with staples. I wanted to know how far I went, so I got my trusty tape measure out. Unfortunately, I left that one behind too. And then I had a drill bit, which was no help to me. And another screwdriver. I don't know anybody uses flathead screws anymore. And I had a lucky wrench. See, this road, I'm still walking. I can't see the, I can see the end, but I can't quite get there. My bag's becoming, becoming light. Oh, it's okay. Got more in here. So if I do any job, I carry some sugar. <laughs> so, what else have I got? There's shrink rattling in here. <laughs> Kel packed this one. Kelly, oh, oh, hang on, look. See, she knows me well, my wife. She packed me a knife and fork. <laughs> You never know when you need something to eat here, Rosie. You see, so I've just sat on the side of the road. I've had my sugar. Oh, that's better. Now I'm walking. Now I'm walking. Now I'm walking, it's light. I can make it. You see, sometimes when we're walking and we leave our bits and pieces and our tools behind that God's given us, we come up against another challenge. And in the life meeting on Wednesday, I really wish I had had this Wednesday. Well, Wednesday, but you've got it. I wish God had given it to me. But on Wednesday, Wendy said this, and I loved it. She said, as Christians, we're given the tools we need. Yeah, and we keep them in our bag. 
but a lot of Christians are walking through life with an empty bag. And the empty bag is useless unless we have the tools. I thought you'd enjoy that one. I like that one. See, I like DIY. But God has given us the tools we need to walk on this road. See, from restoration to completion in the Eternals, there is going to be times when you need the right tool. Yeah. Now, there's no point having a drill with no battery. There's no point having a saw when you need to put a screw in. You see, there's no point telling somebody, I'm going to pray for you, brother, if I don't believe in Jesus. There's no point. And there's another place that we find the recovery road. And we find it in Psalm 23. I want to quickly go there. You can turn or take notes. But this place, they call it the valley. And even more than that, they call it the valley of the shadow of death. This is the road to recovery. Because while we're walking on this road, we are going to come up against some stuff. And we're going to need the tools that God has provided for us. And hopefully by the end of the next 30 minutes, I would have given you some tools that God's shown me to share with you today. So Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He makes me lay down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. For his name's sake. He doesn't... He doesn't do it. Like, I always think, God brings me to that water and he brings me to that place of rest. And do you know why he does it? It isn't to give me rest. It is, but it ain't. It's because I see him in my rest. Because he knows I need rest, Richie, to take the next step on this recovery road. On this journey through the valley, he brings you beside the still waters. He lays you down in green passes to give you rest. So you can take the next step and that you can glorify him in the next step because he has done it for you. He will do it for you. We can't do anything on our own. I can't stand up here today without being on my knees this morning saying, Jesus, use me. Let me be a foghorn for your voice. Use me. When I open my mouth, you speak. I don't care if you take me off my notes. You speak through me. If somebody needs to hear something, use me, Jesus. That's my desire. That's my heart. Use me, Jesus. And yea, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And then you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 So we're walking through this valley. And let me tell you something. Sometimes we just need to get to that table, don't we? Because he's led you beside the still waters. Oh, I left my sword back there because I was cutting up some wood for the trees to make a fire. And he's led me along the still waters where the, the running water, I've been able to fill my stomach up with water. Maybe caught a couple of fish. You know, but now I'm walking again and I'm going through the valley. And in the distance, he's prepared a table for me. And sometimes we just need to get to that table. Am I right? You know, sometimes we just need to get to that table because it's getting really hard now because I've got an empty bag, don't forget. And I just need to get to the table. Because I know he's got something for me because my cup overflows. He's prepared it, so it's everything I'm going to need. But sometimes we get to the table. And the problem is, we sit at the table and we see the banquet. And Louis Giglio put a preach out about don't give the enemy a seat at your table. And it impacted me because how many times have I sat at a table that God's prepared for me? And the enemy's gone, this is nice. 
You could have done with it back air though, mate, couldn't you? You know, when you were really struggling, you know, you could have done with that back air. Yeah. By the way, he's give you loads of fruit today, but you're a meat eater, so where's the meat? Well, yeah, where is the meat? Well, if he's prepared everything for me and he knows me, he knows I like meat. So where's my hamburger? Where's my cheeseburger? Where's my steak? He's giving me watermelon. I can't stand watermelon. There's no taste to it. What's the point of it? He's giving me watermelon. Oh, my goodness. And Louis Giglio put it in that way. And it made me go, how many times have I given him a seat? How many times have I gone, here, mate, there's your seat. Sit down with me. You've been on this walk with me. You've caused me enough issue along the way. You might as well replenish yourself, aren't you? Does this ring true of anybody else? And it's not to be condemned by it. No. Because Jesus said that he prepares your way. Oh, man. He knew. He knows you're going to go through trials and tribulation. Yeah, Didn't he, he say does. it? Amen. Didn't he tell us that trials and tribulation may yeah. come your way? Yeah. But do not worry because I have overcome yeah, the world. That's yeah. it. So yeah. in that walk, although we sit at the table, we need to get a hold of ourselves and say, hey, beat it, mate. This table's not for you. You get back. Get behind me. Stay behind me. This ain't for you. My God rewards those that diligently seek him. And on the walk, if we seek, he will reward. Wow, the valley doesn't seem so bad when you get to the table. But that's not the end. Because the table's here, see? Right on this ridge. I've got a massive hill to go. You see, I've got a, I'm not a big one for hills. My, well, you've got an electric bike, so you're all right. <laughs> big hills are not my friend. But I'm going to do it. And I'm going to step one step at a time. And do you know why we can do that? And do you know why I'd, I say, just take the next step to you today? It's because sometimes our biggest, um, the greatest opportunities always come with the greatest opposition. You see, sometimes the greatest opportunities that he has got for you will come at the greatest opposition you'll ever face. This week has been hard. It's been a hard week. I fell over this week, Terry. Did you bounce? I didn't. (laughs) Ah, ah. But, but I did roll well, I didn't bounce. <laughs> you see, I was walking to my main road, going to Rosie's birthday party, and I was excited because there was cake. And I was walking along, and my phone, the devil's tool sometimes, went off. And it was my work saying, so and so and so and so, I haven't completed their training. And I'm going, that can't be right. I checked that before I left today. And do you know what? I stood on some uneven ground. And I went over on my right ankle. And as I went, I tried to stabilise myself and I put it down again and I put it down in the same place. (laughs) (laughs) Is God trying to tell me something there, Terry? Yeah, it could be. How many times do I make the same mistake over and over and over on the walk? You know, what was worse... I didn't really mind Rob because it was my work phone. Don't tell work. But as I fell, the phone went. (laughs) And it flew into the bush. (laughs) And I like kind of... The worst thing about it, there was a row of cars stuck bumper to bumper. And I'm right in the front of them. (laughs) And I've gone over and I've rode into the bush. (laughs) And they must have been thinking, I wish I had that on camera. I did get some cake and I've got another piece. Yeah, Joe sent me over a piece, which was great. (laughs) You see, now I've got some scars on my knee here. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So I've got some scars because I hit hard. And it cut my knee open. I'll tell you someone else who has scars. You see, he came. And they hung him on a cross. Yeah, bless him. Bless him. And he put scars in his hands. I love him. I love him. And he put one in his side. Bless him. 
And it reminds me of a really good film that I've ever watched. It's the best underdog film you'll ever watch. It's called The Replacements. It's about a group of American footballers, based on a true story, a group of American footballers. And what they do is they go on strike. So they bring in all these people that didn't quite make it to replace them for a few games or for the rest of the season, how long the strike lasts for. And when the team are up against it, and they're up against the best team, the main character, Shane Falco, says this. He's in a huddle, and you imagine it. They're really hanging now. They're really struggling. Now imagine me playing 90 minutes of football. I'm really... I'm, I'm, <laughs> hold me up, mate. Dan's toes have been taped up 16 times, and I'm just about holding it together. Wayne's been sent off. And, uh, and he says this, which is just amazing. He says... I wish I could say something classy or inspirational. But that just wouldn't be my style. He said, pain heals. Hear me on this, preacher's license. Chicks dig scars, but glory lasts forever. And then he says, it's been an honor to share this playing field with you. Well, Lord, it's been an honour to share this playing field with you. And I see your scars. And I dig your scars. And I thank you for your scars. Thank you for your scars, Jesus. You see, we just need to push through. The enemy don't want us to reach the table. No. But we need to push through. <coughs> and when he tries to sit at your table, you need to tell him to, there ain't no chair for you here. There's two chairs. There's one for me and one for my Jesus. Mm-hmm. And if we can do that, we can get up and take the next step. Oh, you see, there was a man in the Bible in in John 20, called Thomas. You see, they nickname him the twin. So I looked into this, and they nickname him also um, Doubting Thomas, don't they? And Thomas said, they said, oh, Jesus is alive, he's back. And he's, he's, this is my version. He said, yeah, right, whatever. If I can see it, I can believe it. If I can touch it, it's real. I'm not willing, no, 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 no. You you lot, I don't know why you've you've been fasting far too long. You need to eat and have a good drink because you're losing it. You see, and they nickname him the twin. So I said to God, what do you mean by twin? And Jesus, I just had that overwhelming feeling. You know it when you say, don't be double-minded. You see, a twin comes from one embryo. Okay? I'm not going to go into the dynamics of it all because God created us one by one and all that. He knows how it works. But it comes from one, and it splits into two, okay? It forms two bodies within the womb. Ladies are nodding, well, Wendy is, so I'm all right, so I'm there. So out of one, become two. And God said to me, don't be double-minded. And it says it here, look, look at this, in John 20. Okay, so Jesus appears to them, and, and, and uh, Thomas says, I'm not going to believe it until I've seen the nail wounds in his hands, and I'm able to put my finger in them, and then place my hand within the wound in his side. And then eight days later, Jesus appears again. Turns up in a locked room. Don't know how he gets in. Didn't rip the tiles off the roof. He just appeared. Yeah. How cool is that? You know, when we're walking in this road and you've got no tools. Well, have we got no tools? Can we use this? Jesus, help me. He hears our cries. He answers us. He's there for us. He's already with us. Wow. You see, so Jesus then appears from nowhere. Poof! Like the genie from Aladdin. Again, preacher's license. Forget I'm on tape. (laughs) See, and then Jesus comes and he says, peace be with you. Now he says that because he knew that it would have started with them. He says it because he knew that they would have gone, whoa, what just happened? Okay, and he says, peace. That's his peace. Be with you. 
And when you're on the road and you're in the valley and Jesus appears, he'll say, peace be with you. Because it's him. And we can have peace because we know he's with us. And then he says, Thomas. Hey, Thomas. Stick your finger in there, my son. No, you ain't my son. (laughs) And then he says, hey, Thomas, check out this bad boy. Check out this from when I rolled over on my knee. And Thomas believed. But that wasn't the end of it because Jesus then replied, You believe because you have seen. Blessed are those who believe without seeing. So when we're on this walk, we've got to just trust that he is who we believe him to be. When we're walking through the valley, we've already said he's our shepherd. Now the shepherd will die for his flock. The shepherd died for his flock. You see, when a bear come after the sheep, the shepherd used his staff to kill the bear. When the sheep got out of line, the shepherd would use the rod to pull him back in, to bring him close. Wow. For he is the good shepherd. And if we can't see him, we are called to believe it. Now, if we're walking our Christian life and all we're saying is, well, if I see it, I'll believe it. You could still be like Thomas, who knew him. But I want to be like the ones who are blessed, who didn't see it, but believed it. So let's look at some of these tools, not these tools. But let's have a look at some of these tools that I've got here for you. So the first set of tools I've got for you is we need to kneel. It's kapow! See, Dan flattering you again. I've got a bucket on copper in his, copying his graphics. Kapow! So we need to kneel. That's kneeling before him. In, what it says is to kneel is to be in a need place position, offering submission. To kneel before him. To accept that we need him. That we cannot do it on our own. Yet he is the ultimate tool to get us to the next place. We need to pray for his relationship. Pray for him to be with us. You see, when we pray, that's how we fight. We pray on him. We pray with him. And he fights for us. We need to open our heart. Heart, it's Plymovian. Open our heart. See, you need to give him all of you, That's right. and you need to make him first place. Amen. And we need to worship. His name needs to be on our lips daily. You see, this is a formula to take the next step. We need to kneel. We need to accept. We need to pray. We need to be open, and we need to worship him. If we can do that, then we're going to be able to take that next step of faith. You see, this will lead to something that I like to call the R's. Repetition and refreshing, it will lead you to restoration and resurrection. Repetition, we need to kneel again. We need to pray again. We need to accept again. You see, and then refreshing of your spirit It will lead to that restoration and the resurrection of yourself. See, we need to be focused on him and not what is around us and in front of us. We need to not be double-minded. We need to be single-minded and know that Jesus is who he says he is. And he's got the best for you, no matter what we're going through. Amen. Amen. You see, how do we recover? Isaiah 30. I'm not going to read it to you, but if you want to take notes, Isaiah 30. I'm going to give you my bullet point version of Isaiah 30, verse 18 to 21. He waits for you. He's gracious to you. 
He blesses you while you wait. He wipes away every tear and collects them. He hears your cry. He'll answer you. He will open your eyes and your ears. He will speak to you and he will direct you. Do you not need to know that where you are right now? Wherever you're on this journey, wherever you're in this walk of restoration, we need to know that he waits for you to kneel, to accept, to pray, to open, to worship. He is gracious to you. He loves you with unconditional love. He blesses you while you wait for him. In the waiting, there is a blessing. He wipes away and catches every tear. He hears your cry and he answers you. How many times have I been on my knees crying, asking yeah, for an answer? Yeah. And we shared on Wednesday that I did that for Evie. I cried out and he answered me. But he was waiting for me. He was gracious to me oh, and Kelly. Man. He blessed us while we waited. He wiped away and captured every tear. Yeah. He heard our cries. He answered us. He opened our eyes and ears. We heard his voice yeah. because he spoke directly to us and he directed us. Yeah. You know, Rob said this morning, just a moment ago, add patience to your faith. Yeah. That's how we recover. We have to stand in faith and by adding that patience was my final little thank you for that it gives me a wow because that's amazing that's amazing that he is just he is there even when I can't see it Amen. and he's waiting for me to say I need you that's just awesome That's just awesome. It also leads me back into this word of Sam's. Because during the second thing that Sam says here, he says, there is going to be a new revelation of my word as well as a new song. See, the old is past. You can't live in the old. We need to live in the new. We need to live in the next step. If we live in the last step, we'll stay in the last step. And you won't go forward because all you'll see is back there. And you won't have the tools you need to go forward. You see, sometimes as Christians, it's easy to see a crack in the road become such a massive canyon to cross. But he says this. We need zeal. We need an appetite. And we need purpose. You need a zeal, an appetite, and a purpose. So when you're walking that road and you're getting tired, and it's hard, and it's still a struggle, but I need to understand that there is a great energy and an enthusiasm of a purpose and a pursuit of an object or a person. That's what it is to have a zeal, a zeal for Jesus. A zeal for Jesus, to have great energy, to have great enthusiasm, to have a purpose, a pursuit of a person or an object. That's Jesus. See, if we have a zeal, you can take the next step. If you have a zeal, you don't see canyons, you see cracks. And a crack underneath a size 10 shoe is nothing. And you can walk through it. And you can get through it. Whether you're still walking to the table... Or we're walking to where he says that he will follow us all the days of our life. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord. You see, there's still a step to take. You need to have an appetite. You need to seek his word. You need to seek his his authority. You need to seek seek him. Seek everything about him. God, you know, what am I having for tea tonight? Jesus, tell me what's good. What's good on the menu? And you have to have a purpose. You have to have a destiny and a future that... He has said, it is not about the temporal today, it is about eternity. It is the eternal that he has for us. 
Okay, so we need to walk by faith. We need to walk by faith. In 2 Corinthians, it says, walk by faith and not by sight. Easy to say that, isn't it? It's so hard sometimes. It's so hard to just say, God, I'm struggling. I've got nothing left. I did it a couple of weeks ago. I phoned up Dan. I said, Dan, I'm meant to be on Sunday. I've got nothing left. I'm just tired. Work's got to me. Can you do it? When I should have been saying, Jesus, I've got nothing left. I need you to just yeah. build me up again. Yeah. I need to go again, Lord. I need to move in you, Lord Jesus, not in my own strength. You can take care of what's happening and you can take care of what's going to happen. Amen. See, while I'm on this, look, on, this, on this walk and on this journey, I'm learning. We're all learning. We ain't got it all together. We're not Terry. I was trying it all together. I just wish you had steady feet. All right, thank you. <laughs> But we need to walk by faith and not by sight. That's it. Okay, because this is what it says also like, in Hebrews, Hebrews 12, uh, 11. It says, um, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Back to Thomas. He hoped it was real. <laughs> but because he didn't see it, he didn't believe it. But we need to be those who believe it when we don't see it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That we know it, that we know it, that oh, we know man. it. Oh, that man. when I place my foot, and I've got this injury, so my foot keeps turning in at the minute. But when I place my foot, I am placing it on what? Solid ground. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Because he prepares my next step. Oh, man. He prepares a light unto my feet. Yeah. So the darkness cannot overcome light. See, in the middle of the darkness, when I'm laid in the bed, waiting for Kelly to fall asleep, and nine times out of ten, she's saying, will you just go sleep? And I'm saying, no, 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 I'm, I'm all right, I'm all right. As soon as I grab my phone because God says something to me and a word goes in, and I get my phone out because I don't have a notepad next to my bed, and I type it into a message to myself, as soon as that light comes on on my phone, my room lights up. Nine times out of ten, it wakes up Kelly. Maybe I should get a notepad and pen, but then I'll have to turn the big light on. So she can't moan, Dan. You know, I'm, trying to be, I'm trying to be like thoughtful. You know, the smaller light, not the bigger light. But no matter how small that light is, that light that is faith yeah. breaks through the darkness. Yeah. Yeah. You see, a man that was given a tool was Moses. I'll be drawn to an end soon. So a man that was given a tool was Moses. Now I thought the tool was this nice piece of wood that he had. You see, he threw it at the foot of Pharaoh and it turned into a snake and he picked it back up. Turned it, I go, that's a tool and a half, that one, isn't it? You could walk to any issue and you go, saw. <laughs> Drill. I mean, how amazing would that be? That's a multi-tool and a half. But you know what? When he stood at the, at the sea, at the river... And he had that piece of wood. Sorry, Terry. That wouldn't be much good. Well, it didn't. This is the point. So I thought when he struck the rock and put it in the sea and the water split. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's a powerful tool. But I was mistaken. Because it says here, look, in Hebrews. Let me turn to it. Oh, I lost that. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, 29. See, Hebrews 11 is quite a good book, Dan. You said that the other week. See, it was by faith. Okay? By faith. They passed through the Red Sea, the Red sea as by dry land. Whereas the Egyptians, attempting to run them down, were drowned. It wasn't by a stick as a tool. It was by faith. Faith is a tool to overcome every situation we face on this restoration road, on recovery road. 
Faith is the key element. I have to have faith that this battery is charged for it to work. Okay? Now I can plug it in. But all we need to have is faith in knowing that he is for us. That he is not against us. So we need to be a wow for Jesus. So we need to walk by faith. We need to overcome in him. And we will see the wonder of his majesty as we walk on this journey. You see, we also, we need to rediscover and reconnect with him. He is our one true love. So there is another tool for that. So we got a wow, we got a zeal. We got a, what did I say, a slap? Not a slap, was it? Pow! And now we got a... A splat. <laughs> we got a splat. So we got to seek him. So you've got to seek him daily. You've got to plant yourself in the right place. Remember earlier we said, be around people that will pick you up, that will dust you down, that will elevate you, that will lift you up, that will speak Jesus into your life. You've got to love yourself. I struggle to love myself only when I'm looking in the mirror. But that's something that God's got to deal with my character flaw. Because I've got to see him as love. And if I see him as love, I know that he loves me just as I am. That's it. it doesn't matter what my outward appearance is no. to everybody else. No. It matters what my outward appearance of Jesus is Amen. to everybody else. Amen. So you've got to love yourself. You've got to ask him for help to do it. Ask him for help. And you've got to testify of his power. And Jesus came to me last night. He said, gold and silver I do not have. But in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And he said, it isn't about what's in your pocket. It isn't the money in your pocket, Dan. It's your testimony that's valuable to me. It is the testimony of who he is. And how he has been with you and yeah. for you. Yeah. That is the most valuable thing yeah. that we have as Christians. We need to testify of his power yeah. through the testimony of his work oh, within us. So who is he? You probably know him. If you don't know him, I'm about to tell you. And I'll tell you what, I came up with this list and I couldn't stop and I could have went on for two or three pages, but I would have bored you. So I'm going to give it to you with as much excitement as I can. And while you're in this journey, if you're truthful about yourself, one of these things that's going to be said right here is going to be something that you need of him today. Or what you're facing tomorrow. Or you may have a meeting on Thursday. Or you may have something you've got to do. So who is he? And we're coming to a close. He is the almighty one. He is the alpha and omega. He is the advocate for you. He speaks on your behalf. He is Abba, Father. He is the bread of life. He is the bridegroom. He is your counsellor. He is the chief cornerstone on which we are built. He is your deliverer. He is your everlasting father. He is your good shepherd. He is your great high priest. He is, I am. He is a holy servant. He came to serve you. Wow. He came as a servant. Blows me away. He is an indescribable gift. He is Emmanuel. He is king of kings. He's lamb of God. He is the light of the world. He is a lion of a tribe of Judah. He is your mediator. He is your Messiah. He is your messenger. He is the prince of peace. He is our hope. He is our peace. He is our redeemer. He is our rock. He is your savior. He is your resurrection and your life. He is the door. He is the trinity. He is the way. He is life. He is the true vine. He is your truth. 
He is your victorious king. Wow. And there's so much more. So when we're walking in this, on this road and we're going through this restoration period of time, he's your deliverer. He is your cornerstone. He is your rock. Yeah, he, is, he is indescribable as a gift. He is your lion. You see, the word says that the enemy comes roaring like a lion, but he is the lion. He's not an imitation. He's the no, real thing, he's the people. Real thing. See, he's your media. He is your peace. He is your way. He will direct you. And if he is for you, who can be against you? No one. No one can be against you. For he is with you. He has already made you victorious. He has won the battle against sin and death. He has given you the victory. He says you're a royal priesthood. He says you are perfect. And then in, in the prophecy through Sam, it says that you, you will dare stepping out in faith more and more. And you, you won't be disappointed. For his word in your mouth, it will not fail. And he will never fail you. True. See, it also says that my people will be prepared to handle the great works of my spirit. As my kingdom takes first place Amen. in their hearts. And it will become a banner over them. What a walk. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What a walk. Yeah. It may be so difficult some days, but what a walk. It's a walk. We just need to get to the table. There's restoration and rest. And when you get to that table, you need to say, this table here is for me and my Jesus. Hey, Jesus, let's eat. Because oh. the cup flows over. And he'll anoint your head with oil. And it's so you can go again Amen, yeah. until we get yeah. to our final resting place Amen. where we can just worship him all yeah. day. No tiredness, no pain, Amen. no suffering, Amen. no tears. Amen. Just peace. Yes. Yes. What a Jesus we serve. Amen. What a Jesus we serve. Wow. Wow. So there's a song. I'm, I'm going to play a song right now. And um, I heard this song two days ago. And it was just amazing. And it rocked me. And I'm going to play this song. And then while this song's playing, if you're in this walk right now, and you're in recovery road, and you feel like you're running dry, and you haven't got the tools, and you're walking around with this, this empty bag. I want you between you and God. I want you to stand to your feet. I'll be already standing. And just be with him and say, God, this is what I need. Jesus, I just need this. If that's you, just stand while this song's going on. And the first verse of this song says, spoke, Moses spoke and testified. Oceans heard and had to move. Daniel braved the lion's jaw, standing on an ancient truth both declaring the great power that's right here working in this room. Oh, yeah. Jesus. 
just meet these people, Lord, where you are right now. Where they are right now, Jesus. Lord, make a way, Lord. Give them the tools they need, Lord Jesus, to take the next step in you, Lord. We declare breakthrough in their situation, Lord, whatever it may be. Lord, you can do it, Lord Jesus. You are in control of this situation, Lord. They stand up, Lord God, saying, Jesus, Jesus, make a way. Have your way, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. There's an opportunity here right now. Jesus says, hand it over to me. I can take it. Don't walk out feeling heavy laden. Let me take it from you. Because I can do all things. I know your future. I have predestined you. I have a future, a good future for you. And I know your next step. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Don't walk around with an empty bag anymore. An empty bag's no good. Amen. Can I get amen? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, move. Let this be a week of breakthrough for, the, for you all. Let this be a week of breakthrough for you all. And those who stood, Jesus sees your faith. And he says it is a substance of things not seen. So thank you, Jesus. All the glory be to God. Jesus loves you. I love you. We love you. Have a great week. Let the next step be a step of faith. Don't look back, look forward. As your destination is solid in him.